In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can change the rhythm section of the Boss RC500 and change the control settings for a few neat tricks. Hey guys, what's going on? It's JB here and welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before and you wanna learn all about music tech and looping, then start now by clicking the subscribe button, hit that bell and you won't miss anything. The Boss RC500 is a really powerful two-track little looper. And if you haven't seen my unboxing and getting started with it, then I'll leave that in the cards now for you to go back and watch. The RC500 is really advanced and can do quite a few different things. For example, when you save a loop, you're not just saving the audio that you've looped onto it, but you're also saving all the settings for that loop, including the drum kit you used, the drum pattern you used, and even any pedal parameters, because you can also change what the pedals do as well. You can mess around with the rhythm section and do some really cool things. And later in the video, I'm going to be showing how we can change these pedals to do pretty much anything we want them to do. Stick around for a nice neat little trick if you've got the pedal in single mode. So for this video, I wanted to show you a couple of cool things, starting with the rhythm section. There are 16 different kinds of drum kits and 57 patterns, each with their own A and B variants. But looking through different videos and the comment sections of my own, two major questions keep popping up. Number one, how can you start and stop the rhythm section? And number two, how can you change the rhythm section's behaviors? So for today's example, I've set up a blank memory for memory number 11, and I've called it rhythm test. What we're first gonna do is we're gonna select the kit and the rhythm that we want and save it to the patch, but then I'm gonna show you how we can control it. So from the main menu, we click the memory button and scroll through with the dial until we find rhythm and click the memory value knob to access that menu. First up is level, which is volume for the rhythm. And this goes up to 200. I like to set mine around 80, but it's totally your preference. The next one is reverb with a value going up to 100. Have a play around this, again, your preference. Now next is our pattern, and I could spend all day with you going over the 57 different patterns and the different A and B variances. But for today's example, we're just gonna use the very first one, which is simple beat one. Next is variants, and as I said before, each pattern has a A and a B variants. Also, there's a nice little fill that actually goes across them when you click it, which is really good. I'm gonna leave variants for now, we're gonna keep it on variation A, and I'm gonna skip over variation change for now. The next is the kit itself, and as I said, there's 16 different kits, so pick the one you want, and then the time signature. There are loads of different time signatures to choose from, but once you've picked it, and you've recorded something onto that memory, you can't then change it. So be sure to set the right one, before you start recording. Now we get down to the really neat stuff, starting with the start and stop. It sounds really simple, but these next two parts of the menu ultimately change how you use the rhythm section on the looper. Now from default, the start option is loop start. This means that the rhythm will play when either a loop recording or playback has started. Now there's two alternatives. The first one is record end. The rhythm will start playing when the recording ends and switches over to playback. This is really useful if you wanna perform without specifying a tempo. So you start recording and then play the loop in time with the rhythm when playback starts. The other option is before loop, where the rhythm plays before loop recording or playback. So the rhythm starts playing and you press the switch once and recording or playback starts in time with the rhythm when you press the switch once again. Now the stop options are just as important. The off option means that the rhythm is always gonna continue playing. If you're performing in synchronization with an external MIDI device, you can keep the rhythm playing continuously to allow synchronized playback. Now the stop option is actually defaulted to loop stop. This is the default that's foxing a lot of people. And when you press stop on the loop, the rhythm stops. And then record end is the option where the rhythm stops when the loop recording ends. This is really useful if you wanna use the rhythm as a guide during recording and it'll stop when you play back. Next is count-ins. Record count is what's happening when you're recording with a count-in. The system is set to off and that is how I personally have it anyway, as I like to create the loop first, but you might wanna have a record count on and if you do, the option is one measure. Now that will be dictated by what your time signature is. So if you've got it down as four, four, you'll get four clicks. If you've got it as three, four, you get three clicks, etc., etc. before the beat drops. The same happens for play count which is a great idea, because you can click the loop and playback will happen a bar before the beat drops. The great thing is you can click it a bar early and be ready for either recording or playback. Fill is whether we go from variance A to variance B with a drum fill in it, and you can turn that off or on. It's set to on by default, and I think that's a good idea. Now this next section's called part one to four, and it's really cool, and I didn't expect it 
It's a really clever system. What happens is the drum beat is made up of four parts and you can turn individual parts on or off. Imagine you love the kit, but you don't want to hear the snare. In this example, that's part two and I can just turn part two off. Be aware though, if you do turn one of them off, it does turn it off on both variants A and B. And finally, tone low and tone high allow you to adjust the high and low frequencies of the rhythm section. Now to save your rhythm preferences, you need to click the exit and the enter button together. Then click right. There's also an option to clear if you want to get rid of it. Then the system will just ask you which of the 99 memories you want to save it to. We're saving on memory bank 11 and you click it and it's saved. You've just created your single or maybe your album. You've done your album artwork. You've popped it onto distrokid.com. Good job. But now you need some promotional tools to put it on places like Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat. Now you could stand there with a version of your disc and hold it up and go and buy my CD and all that kind of jazz. Or you can actually let DistroKid do all the work for you. One of many DistroKid's facilities is called promo cards. Promo cards are a really nice, simple thing where they superimpose your album artwork into different scenarios. There's one here where the kids are actually watching an old school telly and your album artwork is actually superimposed in the telly. I really like that, it's cool. They also superimpose it onto a CD, so it looks like an actual CD in real world. This is really useful and really underutilized, I think. You've done all the album artwork, this is basically showcasing it for you. And the great thing is, if you're gonna use it on somewhere like Instagram, you could then actually tag your music on the Instagram post about your music. The best part of this, it's all free. It's part of DistroKid's service, and it's one of those things where you just click on more, and there's a couple of other options and have a look at promo cards. For one price per year, you can release as many songs as you want, and you can make promo cards for all those songs, or all those albums, or all those EPs. Now here on the channel, we have a great relationship with DistroKid, and we have teamed up to give you 7% off your first annual membership, no matter which tier you go for. There is a Musicians one, there's a Musicians Plus, and there's even a label version as well. There's a link that's on the screen now, it's also in the description box below, and that will give you your 7% off. So give it a click, pick one of the tiers, start releasing your music today. Thank you DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Now the next part of this video is basically how to change these three pedals into practically anything you want. For Boss, this is one of the biggest changes from over their previous pedals, and it's such a massive upgrade that this feature alone is worth getting the RC500 over any of their two track predecessors like the beloved RC30. Now for this section, even though the default pedal suggestions are written on the device, try not to think about what it says. You have to think of them as three blank pedals. So in this instance, record play is pedal one, stop is pedal two, and track select is pedal three. Now if you have a foot switch like the FS6, FS7, then you've also got control one and control two, and if you've got an expression pedal, there's also parameters for that as well. Now the question is, why would you want to do this? Why do you want to change what the pedals do? Well, this means that there's actually quite a lot of possibilities. And again, this is saved per memory. So for an example, let's say for a song you're running as a verse and a chorus, which is called single mode, as opposed to having a multi-mode where the loops play together. We can change the pedals. So for example, this record play could actually be track one, start and stop. This stop button could then be track two, start and stop. And track select pedal three doesn't need to be track select anymore. So you could have that as rhythm start stop or loop effects. Also remember each pedal has a click and also a click and hold as well. So we can change these, so start and stop, but then it can also be undo and clear. Now, if you wanna get really creative, what if you've got a song that's got four parts in it? An intro, a verse, a chorus, and a bridge. We could change the third pedal. So we've got track one, track two, and this third pedal could actually be memory up to go to the next memory. So then when you click this on memory 12, you have exactly the same parameters. But then on memory 12, we could have that as maybe memory down. The nice part is as long as you've done all the prep, what you can do is when you press memory up and you're already playing a track, if it's got the same drum kit and the same 
beat and it's got the same parameters and the same tempo, then memory switching is seamless and it plays from one memory to another. So memory 11, as we're gonna use, could be the intro and the verse, and memory 12 could be the chorus and the bridge, and you could go up and down between them. Remember, everything you're gonna be saving is per memory, for the drums, the drum kit, the parameters, the pedal switches, so it's not over the whole system. Now, if you want the drums to kick in exactly the same as they have for, say, the chorus or the bridge or whatever you've got, then you need to make sure that that's switched on on memory 12, so on memory 11 and 12 are identical. Or maybe it's the breakdown and you don't need them switching on. Can you see where the possibilities are virtually limitless? It's a really, really cool idea. So if you need multiple parts in single mode, you can then use two or three memories to get the whole song in. I'd like to thank the YouTuber Blair Switch Project for pointing this out as it's an awesome idea and therefore it doesn't limit you to just two parts for a song. If you know what you're doing with this, then you can marry those parts together so then your song A and song B are next door to each other. So how do we get into changing all this? Well, actually, it's really simple and you just need to save and write all this to the memory before moving forward, otherwise you'll lose it all. So from the main screen, you're gonna click on the memory button, and this time you're gonna scroll down to the word control. Once you've clicked in, you'll see PLD1 Funk, which stands for Pedal One Function. You'll see that the default is exactly as it's written on the tin. It's current record play. What that means is whether you're on track one or track two, that button is record play. But we can change this. So what I want you to do is scroll anti-clockwise all the way down to the first option, which is off. And then what you'll do is you'll see the light above record play go off. Now what you can do is you can scroll through all the different options. There are absolutely loads. What I'm gonna do for Blur Switch Project's example is I'm gonna use T1 RPSC, which basically stands for record, play, stop, clear. What we've just done is we've just turned pedal one into a one track looper for recording, overdubbing, playing, stopping, and clearing, all on track one. Then on pedal two, I'm gonna go T2 RPSC and do the same. Finally, for this example on pedal three, I'm gonna change it to rhythm PS, which is rhythm, play, stop. And this will allow me to turn the rhythm on and off. Now I'm gonna hit exit and enter together to write it to the memory. Now finally, I'm gonna change this over from multi-mode to single mode so we can use this like a verse and a chorus. To do this from the main screen, just click memory again. Now scroll across one to play and change that setting from multi to single. Remember to write it to the memory. So I've just given you a load of information there. What have we just done? So in this video, we've picked a drum kit and a rhythm and we've set it to the memory. Then we've changed the pedals for this memory to be different as well. Track one is pedal one. Track two is pedal two, and for this example, this pedal right here is the rhythm start stop. But you could change that to memory up if you wanted to, or anything. Finally, we've changed the play mode from multi to single mode, so therefore, when you click on this one, when you click to this one, this one will automatically turn off. This is so you could use it for something like a verse on a chorus. Now that's without even adding an external foot switch or an expression pedal, and we haven't even got into playing with the loop effects yet, or even MIDI. This is how versatile this little box is. Think of your set list or your collection of songs if you play live and you know how your songs are going to be. You could program each patch up in this way to get the best out of your looper. And even if the gig changed, as long as you know which number they're on or you can actually see the name of it, you could scroll across to it really quickly and access that song. There are tons of options available to change the pedals. I can't go through all of them with you today, but I just wanted to give you an example of what you could do as a possibility. If you have found the content of this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me and helps the channel grow. I'm gonna be making a playlist for the RC500 with everything to do with it all in one place. So if you are interested in it, maybe consider subscribing to the channel, and then that way you'll know when a new video about the RC500 goes live. If you wanna support the channel a little bit further, you can do, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. Buy Me A Coffee helps keep this channel alive, and also there is a subscription version if you are interested as well. All the links for Buy Me A Coffee, where you can pick up one of these two bad boys, are in the description box below. Finally, I am going to continue to make some videos on the RC500, including one which is your questions answered. So, if you want your question about the RC500 answered, then pop it in the comment section below. I do read them. If you go through them, I answer them as quickly as humanly possible. Then, if enough people talk about it, then maybe it will be featured on the Your Questions Answered video. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.